Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohe, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and welcome to Episode 2 of Will It Break? Now, in this particular episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take the moving components of this assembly and apply forces to them while they're in motion. And while they're in motion, I want to figure out how much force is being applied to a series of components, or in this example, uh, a component, and then take that environment you know, the peak load of a part while it's in motion and bring it over to finite element analysis, just like I did in the previous example. You know, but the difference here is going to be I don't necessarily have to reestablish what that environment is. The dynamic simulation environment is going to establish all of those forces, the fixed points and loads that, uh, that I need to go ahead and run analysis on it. And then I'm going to take that a step further and uh, perform finite element or uh, parametric optimization to figure out what the right size of that component should be. Okay, so as you can see, I've already gone into the dynamic simulation environment, and you know the nice thing about Inventor is that it takes the constraints that you that you place inside the assembly, and it automatically converts them into joints. Now the difference between joints, uh, stay with me guys, don't start wandering off when I say joint, but the difference between joints and constraints is that joints have a physical relationship uh, between one another. You can actually determine the forces that are that are being applied or torque um, that are, that are being applied. Um, on these uh, joints. So here you can see that, that rather than an insert constraint between these two components, I need a screw type relationship that has a certain pitch and, 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 and other types of properties here. So I can go into the properties of this joint and say, you know, I want to change the mean radius, what the thread angle is going to be, and even, even the friction. Okay, because this it's not a bonded joint. That that part actually gets screwed into the other. So the uh, the load transfer is going to be different than if it were a bonded type joint. Now here, obviously, I have a worm gear. So I'm going to go ahead and call up a worm gear joint okay, between these two components. And then, you know, determine what the pitch is going to be. Ah, one and a half, I, I actually typed that in wrong. The pitch needs to be three millimeters, but no problem. Um, just like anything else inside of Inventor, you just go in and edit the properties of it. And I'll go ahead and change the, uh, uh, the, the, the screw pitch here. So go ahead and say OK. Now, Again, like I was talking about, all these joints in this in entire environment was automatically um, determined based upon the constraints. So we've got a real nice mapping between the constraints, but there's a couple things that you can add additional levels of detail to. Now this insert constraint actually got turned into a joint, but this joint, I want to go ahead and enable some torque on it, right? There's a motor, there's a shaft coming out of that motor, and I want to tell it how much torque is actually being applied from that motor. Now that torque is going to be transferred to the worm gear, which is going to be transferred to the screw joint, which is going to you know, apply force to the part that I'm looking to optimize. Okay, So there's one more thing that I need to do before I can run the dynamic simulation here. I need to, need to apply the downward force that's going to you know, simulate basically somebody sitting on this chair. Okay, So I'll apply the downward force to, to both of those edges, and now I can go ahead and run the simulation. Now, while it's running it, again, it's actually transferring those loads between those joints all the way out to the component so that I can, you know, monitor how much force is being applied to those joints. It's pretty sweet, right? So now I can go and, f and find the joint that I'm looking for here to determine what the forces are. So I just check mark for force here, and then, you know, there's a couple things you can do. You can go into the... Um, you can go into the properties of that curve and say, oh, here's the average, here's the minimum, here's the maximum. And then you can say, all right, search for the maximum. Now, obviously, we have a very short time span here, um, and uh, you know, not, not a lot of iterations. I just wanted to do a small example here, but I can search min, search, search max, to where you have when you have a lot of different iterations, um, it, you know, those search min and max are pretty handy. But then, what you do is you, you check bark those uh, those mins, max, or whatever ones you want for export to FEA, right? And then you go through and say which part or parts do you want to export into the FEA environment. So I'll go ahead and, and choose the part that I'm looking for here, and this is the part that I'm looking to optimize. Now again, the whole goal here was to apply all the forces to this part while the mechanism is in motion. Now I could have just brought this part into FEA and, and tried to guess on you know, what direction the load and the force is you know, at the min and, 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 and max load, but that's what dynamic simulation is for. Okay, it allows you to determine specifically at what angle, at what position, at what stage in that motion, that range of motion, are the peak loads being applied to this component. So I'll just go ahead and start up my uh, uh, simulation environment and just tell it, you know, I, I want a motion load analysis. 
right? And then just determine, you know, which one based upon those timestamps that you checked and check this out. It's actually building the environment. Remember in the last example where I had to determine which was the which was the fix, which was the load, you know, where the torque's being applied, all of that gets transferred from dynamic simulation into the FEA environment by utilizing this workflow. That is wicked awesome. I'll go ahead and keep it clean. Wicked awesome. Right? So here, you know, you can go ahead and determine your mesh settings. Again, we, we didn't get into this in the last example, but this is where you go into the mesh set settings and I'm gonna go ahead and mesh this thing. Make sure that mesh is all right, and by meshing it actually speeds up the, the the simulation portion of it. If you don't mesh it beforehand, it's no big deal. It includes, you know, the mesh is included when you do simulation if it hasn't already been done. Anyway, here I'll go ahead and uh, and check this out. All right, cool. So, um, you know, as you can see, I've I've really uh, applied a significant amount of force to this, and there's a couple of different ways that you can display the model after you've analyzed it you can you can really you know amp up the um, uh, whether you know whether or not it's it's two times three times the actual deformation or just the actual um, but uh, you know again the important part about um, determining whether or not this component is going to work is is analyzing the results right so a couple different ways you can do so obviously von Mises first principle third um, displacement you know, we've got uh, 1.27 millimeters of displacement in this part as it sits today. Now, I want to go ahead and run this through a different simulation. So I'm just going to simply right click on the first simulation, say copy, and I'm going to change the new simulation from, uh, from well, I'm going to change the new simulation to a parametric um, simulation here. And what that's going to allow me to do is, well, first I can I can change the, uh, the material. It doesn't have to be a parametric uh, type simulation in order for me to do this. Um, but I'm gonna change the material. But what it does allow me to do is if I if I go into the parametric table here, and I right click on the part and I say, uh, all right, show the parameters. I'm gonna scroll down to the uh, to the bottom here, and I'm gonna say wall thickness and cut depth. Those two parameters, I want to set up a uh, an acceptable range of parameters for those two. So for wall thickness here, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, all right, I want I want uh, 2.75 and 3.75. I want you to analyze those two diameters. But I also want you to include different cut depths, 39 millimeters, 49 millimeters, and 59 millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and say generate all the configurations. Now I've edited out a little bit of time here because that, that's, that's what actually takes the most amount of time, oddly enough, uh, in this example is building out um, all of the different um, configurations. So once they're generated, you can see I can just kind of cycle back and forth through the available um, configurations. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some design constraints. So um, I want to go ahead and say, all right, von Mises, and then I'm going to add displacement. And for right now, I just want to be able to view the values for each of these different configurations. Okay, and eventually I'm going to use them to to tell me what the optimum configuration is. Savvy? All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and say run an exhaustive set of um, uh, of simulations on, on each and every one of those configurations so I can get the most accurate um, picture right so once I once that's run I can go ahead then as you can see I can just bounce it back and forth between the available sizes and just by viewing the value you can see that uh, you know what my um, what my yield strength is uh, what uh, my displacement is and what the mass is well you can use those um, rather than just viewing the value you can actually say all right give me a range here I want to make sure that this fits within a within a, an acceptable range and right now it doesn't so what I can do is I can say all right rather than guessing what the uh, what the lower limit or, or what the minimal uh, displacement is on, on those available configurations just tell me what it is and you know it also tells me what the uh, minimum mass is so I can, I can make this thing as light yet as strong as it needs to be um, without uh, without worrying about whether or not it's going to break. Pretty cool, right? Then I can go ahead and right click and say promote that to the part and now utilizing dynamic simulation I've set up the environment, determined where my fixed loads are, my, my, my constraints are, my forces are, at the angle it needs to be in, that entire environment switches over to FEA, and then I can determine through parametric optimization as to whether or not it's going to work and which one is best. Again, sure beats lighting your ass on fire. I can't get enough of this clip, guys. It's hilarious, which is why I included it. It's funny. It's funny. It's a big hat. It's funny. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. See ya.